Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rancor. I climb the online series 7 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a super fun team. It's a Series 7 Hyper Offense team that was built by Bin Jie Wang. You may recognize him because he got second at Dallas Regionals about a year ago and has definitely been one of the best players throughout the last year. Has built some really cool teams. We featured a bunch of his teams on this channel as well. So thank you to Benji as always for the team. You can find him linked in the description below. He actually just qualified for the final stage of the Players' Cup 2 with this team. So yeah, congratulations to him. And once again, more details in the description below with the rental code that you also see on the screen as well as his Twitter. So let's get into this one. He built a team around this core that has really risen in popularity recently surrounding Thunderous, Urshifu, and Nao Ego. These Pokemon are all basically really fast, and Thunderous can further increase their speed through max airstream. And with Choice Band Urshifu, after an airstream, you can just do so much damage with, you know, crit wicked blows onto everything. So the idea is that you can just lead Thunderous, Urshifu, and just, you know, kind of pick up quick knockouts turn after turn after turn. You can also use Max Knuckle to increase Urshifu's attack, making it even more threatening. Now he goes another Pokemon that's been trending a lot recently, especially by a lot of top players, and one reason they like to use it is because it gets access to uh, Meteor Beam, so combine that with Power Herb, you get a plus one special attack Meteor Beam that takes only one turn and you get to use it immediately. So you're pretty much only using it for that one time, but that one time can pick up so much damage and do a ton into Pokemon like Galarian Moltres or Rotom Heat. This team also has a Rotom Key, and this is a Pokemon that's also increased in popularity recently, especially because of how popular Metagross is. Most Metagrosses nowadays don't run a Psychic type attack, you're running Steel, Ground, Ice, and Protect, and so Rotom can basically completely wall Metagross, get a Nasty Plot off, and then just sweep through. If you get even a single Nasty Plot off with this Pokemon, it can really just pick up big KOs, especially if it Dynamaxes as well. To round out the team, you've got Clefairy, that's been a staple for a lot of Hyper Offense teams this year, you know, similar to like the Talonflame, Porygon Z. Um, Clefairy stuff that we saw earlier in the year kind of pro provides a similar role here. Boom Blast slash an attacking move on Clefairy in general just has a lot more value now because Urshifu Dark is everywhere, and so uh, having you know even attack that can just do damage into it and potentially even KO it is really really valuable. So pretty standard Clefairy set here. The last Pokemon is Assault Vest Cortana. Not, there's nothing too crazy about this Pokemon, but it's just a Pokemon that can also have a lot of snowball potential, especially when you pair it with this Dynamax Thunderous, right? Giving it speed boosts or. Uh, uh, fighting or attack boosts, I should say, through Max Knuckle just makes it even regular Cartana a really, really big threat. So, uh, yeah, this is a core that you guys are going to see a lot of in the upcoming weeks. One of the reasons I wanted to feature this team is because, one, I want to see how it, you know, works, but I've also gone up against it a bunch and it's really, really scary. So, uh, I think that if you are team building for Series 7 right now, uh, this is kind of a composition that you need to be prepared for because it's only going to get more popular in the next couple of weeks. So, Let's get into it. Thank you so much as always for watching. Thank you to Benji for the team. Once again, you can find him in the description below. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, I was thinking about, you know, if you could create any item to add to the game, what would it be? The reason I thought about that was because I was like, oh, you know, redirection is just really good. It's not like broken or anything, but uh, I always thought like having an item that matches like Duraludon's ability, which, you know, allows you to ignore redirection would be really cool. So curious what other items you guys could come up with. Let me know in the comments below. And overall, I think that, you know, this is, you know, slightly new take on Hyper Offense. With a lot of other Hyper, hyper Offense teams, typically you have like a Tailwind user like Whimsicott uh, or, you know, now Tornadus is viable in the format. And the idea is to use the Tailwind to enable these sweepers. But the reality of Series 7 is that there aren't that many Pokemon that actually naturally outspeed Thunderous. Like you have Dragapult, Regieleki, and those are the main ones that people are using, right? So if you don't go up against those, odds are that you will just be faster than your opponent right from the start. But it's not like if we go up against another Tailwind team, or an, a Tailwind team in general, we'll be doomed because uh, this team has Clefairy, and Clefairy for that redirection support is really valuable. It means that you can lead Clefairy Thunderous and just, you know, soak up damage onto the Thunderous, go for Helping Hand support onto Thunderous as well, and Clefairy can also redirect attacks away. So, yeah, I'm curious to see really what matchups we run into. One other really interesting thing about this team is the Now Ego with the Trick Room. You're not going to use Trick Room very much, you know, to actually set it up. You're going to use it to reverse opposing Trick Room. So, for example, against more passive lead combinations, say something like an Incineroar plus a Dusclops, uh, Now Ego could potentially come in there and just, you know, use Trick Room to reverse the opposing Trick Room. So, getting into the first match of today's episode, it's a Dragonite team, which is very cool. Entei, Dragonite, uh, Galarian, Articuno, Landorus. A lot of cool stuff here. 
Um, so this actually is probably a fantastic game for the Nao Ego because I've got like the, the Meteor Beam. Okay, and I will say the one scary thing about using uh, this set is that you can miss Meteor Beam. It's not 100% accurate and a miss is so bad because it's like, that's basically when you use Meteor Beam that you're putting all of your, you're committing to that one move because you're not going to use it after anymore. You need to use it while you have that charge. Um, but I actually really like Thunderous plus Nao Ego here. Um, mainly because Urshifu isn't super good as a lead and took the comfy stuff. So Thunderous now, you go... We maybe just go full offense here, like Cartana Urshifu seems okay to me. I guess the question is whether we actually really need Cartana. Something like Rotom Heat might have a little bit more value, now that I think about it. Um, but the Cartana helps against Tapu Fini. This team has so much anti-Tapu Fini stuff though, and by the way, that's another reason why it's good, right? Like, Tapu Fini is the most common Pokemon in the format right now, so to have so many Pokemon that naturally counter Tapu Fini makes you know, our life a little bit easier. Um, let's see. What's Rotom really doing like Cartana? I, I guess it, it does pretty well into the Dragonite. Moltres to an extent. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's bring Rotom. Because what we can do with Rotom is we can nasty plot in front of the Entei as well. But I feel like this matchup looks good on paper. So let's see if we can execute well. Because of course, while it's good to have a good matchup, you still need to lead properly, and then you still need to play properly as well. The upside of a good matchup is if you do have the proper lead and brought the right Pokemon, you don't have to make really crazy predictions. You can just play relatively safely uh, and still win the game. So it's Comfy Dragonite, which I'm totally okay with here, because I think... Uh, the only one play I'm worried about is like a Protect Trick Room play turn one, which would be really interesting. Um... Because the play I want to go for, honestly, is just a Dynamax, like... Airstream into the Dragonite and just go for the Meteor Beam right away. I'm kind of down for that. Uh, yeah, the worst case scenario here is Dragonite protects Comfy Trick Rooms. So perhaps it would have been safer to just double up onto the Comfy. But also, I don't like. Now, if you see now we go, you should expect the power of Meteor Beam, but I don't know if like a lot of players have caught on to that yet. Uh, if you haven't been following the metagame like super avidly or, or, or playing against, or you haven't gone up against the set. Because um, it's something that only got popular like pretty recently. So they don't switch out, um, which I'm okay with. Like the best case is if Comfy just to tries to activate like weakness policy on Dragonite and you know, my opponent hopes to like go for a max quake onto Now Ego. I think it may have just been a better play to double up onto the um, the Comfy here, just because I have so much offense in the back. But it looks like they are going to Dynamax, so that's great. That's what we want to see. So I'm hoping it's Self-Draining Kiss. You know, they break the multi-scale, I get Airstream off, I get Power Beam off, and just uh, pick up the KO. Like, that would be sick. Uh, sorry, not Power Beam, Meteor Beam. <laughs> the Dragonite Comfy was a you know combo I was expecting to play up against, so... Actually, surprising it took this long to run into one. Ooh, they go for a helping hand. Okay. I don't know if we're going to pick up this knockout then. Let's see. I'm going to guess that it's going for a max quake here. Oh, that's actually really good damage. Nice. I, I think this should be a knockout then as long as we connect. And if we knock out, I think now Ego just beats this entire team with sludge bombs at plus one special attack. Okay, so we go for the meteor beam. Charges up. Oh, I love, I love that you see that animation too. Okay. We get the special attack boost. There's the power herb. Come on now, you go. Please hit. Nice. Plus one meteor beam. Goodbye, Dragonite. Beautiful. So that's what this combo can do, right? Power now you go is just really interesting as well because you know having boosted and, and now it, like we're, we're comboing so quickly, right? Now like in one turn we got now you go to plus two special attack plus one speed. So I'm not going to use Meteor Beam anymore, but do I really need to? Sludge Bomb has really good coverage in slow format, and if you think about what's really resisting Sludge Bomb or immune to it, like it's Steel types, right? But this team has a lot of good anti-Steel stuff with Rotom Heat, uh, Choice Band Urshifu, you know, which does really well into all the Steel types, as well as Kartana as well. Um, so Entei comes out, that's okay, I don't really mind that. Uh, I think we just go for the KO onto Comfy, make sure that can't do much. Uh, I'm down to get an attack boost onto my... Thunderous as well, so I'm just gonna go Knuckle into Sludge Bomb into Comfy. Comfies do carry Protect, but like, I just need to make sure this thing doesn't get Trick Room up. Ooh, but they go for Ally Switch, which is gonna be even worse for them, because I think that means Entei goes down now, so it's pretty much the dream first game that we'd have asked for for this team. And this is what this team can do, right? It can just really run over uh, it, right on the first turn. But 
Uh, like I said, that's why I said like in team preview, things look pretty good for us because my opponent didn't have any great switch-ins, nor did they have great speed control. So if you're able to outspeed your opponent with this team, it's really, really hard for them to win. And yeah, now he goes now at plus three special attack, plus one speed, and I guess it has an attack boost as well. And, you know, that's the danger of beast boost in this format. You can just snowball games so, so quickly if you're unprepared. So, yeah, turn one could have been a little scary. They have Top Buffini in the back. And, like, one thing that this team does really well is that there are very few Pokemon that, like, can reliably resist all of the attacks here, right? Because it's like, you have to cover for Electric, Flying, Fighting from the Thunderous, and then Rock, and then Poison, and then Dark, and Fire from Rotom, right? Like, there's just so much offense, and it's tough to cover for all of it. So... I'm down to just Max Lightning, Tapufini. Actually, the best play here, like, just to make sure, because actually, there is a world in which my opponent could win with Dynamax Tapufini if they, for example, had Protect on Comfy and Fini was able to pull something off. Um, oh, wait, they can't Dynamax anymore, so I guess, yeah, there wasn't much they can do. But I, I was saying, like, a world in which maybe they have Focus Sash Comfy, uh, get Trick Room up, Fini then could get Muddy Water Accuracy Drops, and that'd be a problem, but... I think this is a good example of how snowball-y this team can be. And this is just one of the many leads, right? Like, I think Dundras plus almost any of the Pokemon can be really good, just because max Airstream for natural speed increases is really, really good. Um, but, like, you know, I, I would say Thunderous plus Urshifu is probably the most common core uh, that you want to lead with, but you could also go Thunderous, uh, now Ego as we did here, Thunderous Clefairy, for example, uh, or Clefairy plus any of the other Pokemon as well. Um, I will say that there was a slight risk in our turn 1 play, because if Trick Room goes up here and you have the Max Quake on the Dragonite, for example, if you protect Trick Room turn 1, things get a little dicier. So, I actually don't know if I like my play too much there, because while I was relatively confident my opponent, you know, wouldn't see that move coming, um, I, I think it's probably safer to just cover for the potential Trick Room option, because if Trick Room goes up, we actually are in a really, really bad position, and without bringing Clefairy, I'm not really sure how I get out of it. Because then turn two, you can go side draining Kiss to activate a weakness policy on the Dragonite and then try to sweep a Dragonite under Trick Room. So I think if I were to replay that, I'd actually probably just aggressively target Comfy turn one anyway. Uh, granted, what we did here ended up working out, but it may have been a little bit safer to just make sure Trick Room doesn't go up because uh, you know what we had in the back would have been really good in a Dragonite too um, with the Rotom Heat and the Urshifu. And if you look at what my opponent had in the back, it was Entei and Feeny. Rotom Heat does pretty well into both of those, especially if it gets a nasty plot off. I still have multiple turns of Dynamax with Thunder, so I can continue just going for speed boosts. But yeah, um, I'm glad I get to you know show off what the Meteor Beam can do, right? This thing does so much. I mean, it's essentially like a really powerful max move, right? Uh, good base power. And the fact that you get that increased stage of special attack immediately is really nice. Like, Power plus Meteor Beam is a sick combination because it's like, not only uh, do you just get the attack off in one turn, and we've seen that, you know, with Power uh, different sets throughout the years, but like, you also now get this increased stage of special attack, and that applies to the attack that given turn. Alright, next game of the day. It's been taking a while to find some of these opponents. Uh, this is just kind of a classic Larry and Moltres team. I think this is definitely just Thunderous stuff again. Um, what's really bad here for my opponent is that if you activate, if you bring your Intimidates, you'll activate Defiant and Thunderous will just kind of clean up very easily. Now he goes actually attempting lead here, but the reason I'm not the biggest fan is because of the steals. So I think it's probably a little bit more consistent to just go Thunderous and the Urshifu here. Um, because like, if you look at the main threats on my opponent's team, it's going to be Metagross, Cortana, Feeny to an extent and Moltres. Uh, I'm not really that worried about Landris. So it's like with Thunderous and the Urshifu, I can just Airstream turn one into Urshifu and get a huge banded close combat off. So I like these two. Um, I actually, I mean, how could we not bring Rotom Heat into this matchup? It's into an Incineroar, Metagross, Cortana. That also seems pretty solid. And I'm actually really surprised my last opponent brought that Tapu Fini because I feel like this team is so anti-Tapu Fini, but it worked out for us. Now he goes tempting here just for the... Uh, Meteor Beam into the Moltres, but and that that's another thing this team does well. You have a lot of Moltres answers as well. Moltres is super common in the format, right? Um, does Cartana have a Dark type attack? It doesn't. No Night Slash. So Metagross walls it a little bit. Um, I think when in doubt, Clefairy is actually probably the right answer. But I'm down to bring Now Ego again. This Pokemon is just super interesting, and if we could get more be Meteor Beams off, it'd be sick. But I will say because it's a very hyper offensive team, there is more risk in using something like Meteor Beam because if you miss and you just get KO'd, like you lose so much. And so like 90% of the time you come out 
so 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 positive but in those you know small t times that it can miss it's it can be really really brutal so you don't want to rely on it especially super early on if you don't have to okay it's gonna be metagross and cortana um uh this is actually kind of scary this is a nice lead by my opponent i think mm, there's obviously the risk of max hailstorm from metagross but cortana can also just max airstream into us I have Rotom in the back, so I think Cortana is probably the bigger threat right now, so I think I'm content to just go max Airstream into Wicked Blow into the Cortana. Guarantee a knockout onto that. I don't think Max Hailstorm one-shots the Thunderous here, unless you're like Life Orb. Um, and this also gives me the speed boost immediately, so I'm down for this because then my Urshifu outspeeds my opponent's entire team, and then the next turn I can just max Knuckle Wicked Blow. Good lead from my opponent's end, though. I think if they led anything, like either of the Intimidate users or Tapu Fini, I can just run, like, away with the game immediately. But the nice thing about this lead is I have to respect both of my opponent's Pokemon right now because, oh, I guess they could actually just say, you know what, I'm just going to Dynamax Kraton and Max Airstream. That would be interesting because I don't know if I KO with Airstream Wicked Blow, but they actually don't max either Pokemon. Huh. Okay. That is a curious decision. Uh, well, we should get a knockout onto the Kartana here. Unless the Metagross has a Fighting-type attack. Or, or just a way to not, like, one-shot the Urshifu here. That could be scary. I'm really surprised to not see either of these max, though. Because I feel like they were both, like, the two best max options on my opponent's team. Because you're not going to max Incineroar. You're not going to max Landorus. I mean, maybe you could, but, like, he just goes for a regular Ice Punch. Okay. Does a lot of damage. And they were life Orb. Whoa. So if they actually went max Hailstorm, maybe that would have been enough to pick up a KO. Huh. I haven't seen Life Orb Metagross in a minute. Like, I, but it's good, right? Like, a lot of people obviously like policy and whatnot. Moltres comes in. That's fine by me. I have the speed boost here. Um, I mean, Wicked Blow's guaranteed to hit through Metagross unless you... Uh, one play you can make is Dynamax that, but then Moltres would have to use a regular attack. I think I'm fine just going Max Lightning into Moltres here and Wicked Blow into the Metagross. Because you can only Dynamax one of these two Pokemon right now, right? If you don't Dynamax Metagross, why well, just KO you because you can't protect in front of my Wicked Blow? It's part of the reason why this team is super, super strong. Like, Urshifu with Choice Band just does so much more damage. You know, I was using Black Glasses Urshifu earlier, which I really, really like. Um, but the band is super, super good with this team. And it also allows you to run Poison Jab because you obviously don't need Protect. So with Poison Jab, you actually have a way to hit the Tapu Finis for super effective damage as well. So it is going to be Moltres maxing. Not much of a surprise here, but... Um... The only scary thing... No, the thing is, like, I'll still outspeed the Moltres in subsequent turns. I think, like, regardless, there's really not much my opponent can do right now. I don't think this one-shots, but it should do, like, 70, 80%-ish or so. Wow, never mind. That actually almost one-shot. Oh my goodness. Thunderous is just such an offensive beast. And, you know, we used the uh, Max Thunderous with that Brutal Swing team. You know, with Metagross, uh... And AV Thunderous, but you can see how much of a difference Life Orb makes, right? Like, look how much damage it's doing. Granted, I did activate a policy, so, you know, the Moltres is at plus three special attack now, but I'm not really that worried, to be honest, because at best, you either Airstream to KO the Urshifu, or you Max Darkness into the um, Thunderous, and because I have that speed boost from earlier, like, I'll just outspeed your uh, Moltres even if you Airstream here with either Pokemon, so it's not really a problem. Uh, and they go for the Airstream here onto the Urshifu. So this is great, right? Because, like, in this position, those three special attack boosts actually don't make a difference at all. Because you were just going to KO the Urshifu without any special attack boosts either way. So, only scary thing could have been like a Max Darkness there into the Thunderous. But like I said, we would have outsped anyway. So, what do they have in the back? Landorus, Incineroar, um, Tapu Fini. So, what do I want to bring out here? I think we should just go now Ego first because we're just faster. This gives us two Pokemon that are faster than the Moltres. And if it's Cortana, then I've got the Rotom Heat to beat that in the end game. And they're around Landers, which is really bad news for them, because they just activated Defiant. Defiant Thunderous is just so, so sick, because, like, so many people like using Intimidate in the format right now, right? And the Intimidate users are really not good against Landers. You give this a boost, like, it's just so hard to come back from. So, even if they're Scarf Landorus, because we have the speed boost here, we'll always outspeed. So the correct play is to always max Airstream into the Landorus, I think, and just go for Sludge Bomb onto Moltres. The reason why, like, I don't want to be caught off guard by a Choice Scarf and have my opponent go for a, you know, a Protect and then Scarf, like, Rock Side or Scarf EQ, but because I know Thunderous outspeeds Landorus 100% of the time, like, there's literally no way you can outspeed us. 
it's always safe to target the landers there because that also means that I get the speed boost on the Thunderous and then now Ego can get free damage off in the subsequent turn. So, yeah. Like, you can see how good this core is already, right? We've been bringing the main mons in Thunderous or Shifu now Ego and they've been putting in so, so, so much work. So, yeah. You know, one of the other things about this team and or about this core in general as well is that, like, if you think about Hyper Offense previously, you had... Typically, it would be one Pokemon to set up Tailwind to enable a really strong sweeper, right? For example, a was it? For example, a Talonflame or a Whimsicott to set up Tailwind for Porygon Z, for example. And the problem with that stuff is that your Tailwind user is not really a huge offensive threat. In this team, you know your Pokemon that's setting up the Speed Control, which is Thunderous with Max Airstream, is actually a huge offensive threat. You know, it's actually maybe the main offensive threat, um, combined with obviously like Banded damage from Urshifu as well. So it's like you have two things now that suddenly do a lot of damage instead of just one Pokemon that is trying to set up the speed control for the rest of the team. And I think that's a really important point to make because, for example, when going up against Porygon Z, typically you'd be going up against Porygon Z and then a support-oriented Pokemon like Whimsicott, like uh, Talonflame, like Clefairy, for example. So then it's not really that... I mean, it's still really scary, but then it's like you only are facing one really big attack off, right? But with this team, it's like... On any given turn, if you lead Thunderous, uh, any combination of Thunderous or Shifu or Thunderous now you go, you have two huge, huge offensive threats coming your way. So it's like, how do you cover for both of those op both of those options? Like, and it's, it's tough, right? Um, but this should be an interesting one because we're actually going up against Tailwind. So this is, I think, one of the tougher things to go up against because this team normally wants to outspeed the opponent and just pick up KOs. But in this case, we won't be able to do that very effectively. So I think Clefairy definitely has to come out here. Um, we need Clefairy for speed control immediately. My opponent's team is also like almost entirely physical, which is very interesting. Um, they also have Triple Genie. <laughs> That's a throwback to 2013. Like, I'm... <laughs> you know what's actually a really interesting consideration? Setting up Trick Room with Now Ego here. If my opponent needs like... Tornadus and Regieleki... What's the only, actually, the only way my opponent counterplays that is if they lead landers, but I can't see them leading landers, to be honest. That would be really surprising. I kind of want to try to set up Trick Room as they Tailwind turn one. It's high risk, but high reward as well, in my opinion. Uh, Banded Urshifu in the back, and I think Thunderous is our last one. It, the thing with this lead is I don't have to set up Trick Room. I, I just want to experiment a little bit because I, I want to see if... Because if I'm not setting up Trick Room against this team, that means I'm literally never using it unless we're going up against opposing Trick Room teams, which would make some sense, right? Like, uh, once again, by having Trick Room on this now, you go, you cover for, like, really passive leads from, like, things that want to set up Trick Room, like Dustclops plus a support-oriented mod like Regieleki or Incineroar, for example. Okay, this is not bad, because this is definitely just a follow-me Trick Room turn one, as I think they try to probably go for a Tailwind. Uh, I guess the question is whether I need a Trick Room on turn 1, but I think the answer is yes, because I think um, you could very likely switch Regieleki out into Landorus. So if I get Trick Room up now, that gives me really good control for this late game. And even if, I mean, like, even if you bring out, like, there, my opponent's team is just pretty fast, and I feel like you should be Tailwinding here. Maybe you do read into the Trick Room, though, um, and if so, props to you. But even so, like, Tornadus and Regieleki are faster than now, now we go in Clefairy. What could be a problem, though, is Regieleki Volt Switch, Tornadus Taunt, and Landorus comes in, because then you can EQ the next turn. But if that happens, then I'm just going to switch now we go out into Thunderous. So, it's not like I have zero counterplay to that. So, let's see. Um... I'm expecting Volt Switch, maybe screens. No Dynamax here, but that's obviously not surprising. We go for Follow Me. Show me Tailwind. Nice. All right, it worked. Cool. Okay, so that's that's really good for us. Uh, okay, they just go for Light Screen. That's fine. Follow Me is just safe there. Just covers for now. You go taking too much damage. Um, we get Trick Room up, and getting Trick Room up when your opponent Tailwinds is got to be one of the best feelings in the world, honestly. So we'll take that. Um, okay. With that, I think while Tornadus may... A lot of Tornadus don't even run Protect here, but I, I kind of want to... Actually, why do I need to cover Tornadus? What in the world does that do against us? It has a Flying-type attack into the Urshifu, I guess. Um, but I don't think you can really do much more, so I'm down to just move... Well, actually, I wonder if Helping Hand is better. Yeah, I'm down to Helping Hand Meteor Beam here into the Regieleki. The one thing I just want to double-check is a potential switch-in. Uh, Urshifu is the only... Yeah, you can't switch it. Actually, there's nothing that takes... Uh, Fairy plus rock. 
So instead of Helping Hand, I'm just going to go for Moonblast because it covers for a potential Urshifu switch in here. I think that's really unlikely, but yeah. Uh, they go for Taunt, that's fine. The thing is, yeah, having, having this Moonblast is actually kind of valuable right now. So I don't know if we KO the Regieleki. Uh, we should if it did that much damage. I love seeing the Meteor Beam animation, by the way. It's super sick. Let's see if this hits. So we're at plus one special attack. I mean, if we pick up this KO, then once again, the snowball continues with now Yugo, right? And it hits. Very nice. Oh, that's got to be one of the sickest animations in the game. Goodbye, Regieleki. Okay, nice. So, plus two special attack immediately now. I am taunted, so obviously I can't go for anything other than Moonblast, but Moonblast is actually really good against my opponent's team. Like, they don't have switches into... Um, Sludge Bomb plus Moonblast right now, and even though they have Light Screen up, like, Tornadus is in a really terrible spot. Uh, okay, Dracovish comes out. Interesting. Well, I don't mind that. Especially with who I have in the back. Uh, my opponent's Tornadus is literally not, like, it's useless right now, so I'm down to just double up onto Dracovish. Like, will Now you go go down here if Dracovish Dynamaxes, I guess, but then I can bring in Urshifu. The only problem in not knocking out the Tornadus is that the longer I leave it on the field, the more it can taunt and go for flying type attacks later on into me. So, like, that's why I maybe should have considered just picking up the knockout. But, like, Tornadus does no damage other than through its flying type attacks, and, like, now Yugo and Thunder is completely wallet. So, I'm not super scared of it. And they don't max the Dracovish, so this should just go down, I would think, even with Light Screen being up. Oh, maybe not, actually. Let's see. I mean, like, we are at plus two special attack, but I actually don't know if we do enough with this. With light screen being up. Like, I would think the answer is no. Never mind. No, he goes just too good. <laughs> That's another stage of special attack. I'm really glad, though, because, like, when I try out a new team, I want to feature all the different components components of it. Oh, and they have Heat Wave, which is a really good tech for Cortana, by the way. You can see how bulky Naoigo is from the special defense side. Um, so, Heat Wave, Taunt, and Tailwind, which means you probably don't have Protect, because you want to run a flying type attack. And, yeah, like, like the... the uh, the Clefairy is just doing work in terms of damage right now, right? I don't I don't even need um, to Dynamax here. I mean, I think we can just go... Actually, it's one interesting consideration is to Dynamax to max Rockfall <laughs> into Tornadus. Um, I mean, we're so far ahead in this game, but why? Is there any reason to do that? Like, I think Dynamax Thunderous just wins us the game here, guaranteed. So, I think it's fine to just Moonblast Sludge Bomb Tornadus. I, think, I would think plus three Sludge Bomb KOs Tornadus. Uh, no Dynamax, once again. I feel like our opponents just haven't been... Well, I guess one thing is that they haven't really been in great positions to Dynamax, which is, you know, one of the things that this team does really well. And this now Ego is just sweeping through. Oh my goodness. Like, it snowballs so quickly. It's like, if you get a KO from the Meteor Beam, then it's like all the other KOs just come turn after turn after turn. But I guess also if you look at what my opponent brought in this game, like, what can you even Dynamax realistically, right? I'm not sure there's a great answer there. And you can see, once again, this is why Moonblast is so good on the Clefairy, because it makes it helps you, you know, chip away, break through Focus Sashes. If you look at my opponent's team, actually, they brought, like, no good Pokemon like a Dynamax. Like, I feel like out of the four, they, the best play for them would have been to Dynamax the Dracovish. So I'm surprised that didn't Dynamax. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Choice Scarf, though, or a Choice Ban, so maybe they were hesitant to, but... I think they needed to at least Dynamax something. Obviously, it's not going to be Tornadus or the Regieleki, um... Although you shouldn't count out Dynamax Radio Lucky, like that's actually a, a it can it can work, especially in the late game. Uh especially if you're running like a choice specs hyper beam set, for example. But given that the light screen came out turn one, it's obviously a, a more support oriented set. So yeah, like Reggie Lucky isn't Dynamaxing, Tornadus isn't Dynamaxing. Urshifu and Dragovish are not like the best Dynamax options either. Like you, you actually would prefer to use those as non-max Pokemon. So yeah. Clefairy put in a lot of work for us in that game, and I am glad to like see that we can actually use Trick Room to win with this team as well. Um, because I think if you try to go with the normal mode, like imagine if I try to go with like Thunderous stuff, uh, if I go Thunderous Clefairy, for example, like I don't want to leave Thunderous plus another offensive attacker because like Urshifu is actually weak to like Tornadus. Uh, I guess one possible combination we could have gone with was just Thunderous plus the Now Ego. Uh, that actually would have put on a lot of pressure against my opponent's team as well. Um, Actually, the more I think about it, the more I think that duel was also really good into my opponent's team. But I wanted to see if Trick Room could work there, and I got my answer. So, not everyone's obviously going to click Trick Room on that first turn, though, right? And I think that, like, uh, the, one of the reasons I wanted to use this team is to let you guys, like, you know, know what it does. Uh, because, like, I, I think now we go... Power plus Meteor Beam seems intuitive, but it's just kind of a new way to run it, because, like... 
you know, Meteor Beam wasn't an attack in previous generations. And so when people see now, you go, at least when I did, at least, for example, I wouldn't think of that combination immediately. I would just think of the old set of, like, Sludge Bomb, Power Gem, Trick Room, Protect. Um, but, yeah. The fact that it has Trick Room is really cool. And I think that if you were looking at this team on, on paper, you'd be like, why in the world does it have Trick Room? Like, it's so fast. But uh, against that Tailwind matchup, that's exactly what you need it for. Uh, you know... We, we've had similar issues against like other Tailwind teams before using relatively offensive teams where it's like, yeah, if they set up Tailwind, our goal is to just outspeed and use like relatively frail Pokemon to knock them out. Well, if, if they go first, how are we going to knock them out before they knock us out, right? Um, wow, okay. Seems like there's not many people playing on the ladder today. <laughs> or, or maybe it's just having a tough time finding people, but yeah. Either way, though, I, uh, I've i been having fun with this team. So I, I you know now, now what's interesting is like, how does the metagame adjust to beat this core? Because I think like, the Thunder or Shifu now Eagle Core specifically is really good, but then like Rudum Heat's also a, a trending Pokemon right now in the metagame. That's super solid, uh, especially because Cartana is also rising in popularity. So obviously Rotom Heat uh, is a really good natural counter to Cartana. It's funny, a lot of the Pokemon on this team actually counter like uh, the other Pokemon on the team. For example, Thunderous here destroys actually, now Ego destroys opposing Thunderouses, Rotom Heat destroys opposing Cartanas. One, yeah. Okay, well, similar core here, but they have Dragapult instead. That may be a problem because Dragapult will guaranteed go first. So if they have max Airstream, they can outpace us. Hmm, and that may be a problem. Now I do have a Bandit, oh. You know what's one calc that I don't know? Helping Hand, Choice Band, Sucker Punch into Dragapult. I actually think that may be enough to pick up the Knockout. So like, I kind of want to lead Urshifu <laughs> plus uh, Clef. But it feels kind of troll because, like, there's so many anti clef stuff here. I don't know. This could be really interesting. The alternative is just go Thunderous plus, like, Clef Airstream into, like, Dragapult, get the free switch in into Urshifu. That may be safer. Um, that's probably safer. Yeah. But I think we'll, we should keep in the mind that we do have a choice band sucker punch in the back. The problem with the, the Clef or Shifu lead is, like, things can get really out of control. My opponent can snowball the game really quickly with if I go with that combination. Uh, I don't think I bring my own Naoigo. It actually might have to be Cartana here because of the opposing Naoigo. I mean, Rotom Heat's tempting into the opposing Cartana, though. Hmm. Do they really bring Cartana out in this matchup? I'm gonna bring Cartana. We haven't used that as much today, but I don't know if it's actually the right decision here, because, like, Neither Rotom or Cartana do much damage in the Dragapult. The opposing Cartana, we do have super, like, we have max knuckle, close combat. Actually, I guess the other thing to think about here is that Cartana is not much of a threat if it doesn't Dynamax, right? You have to Dynamax it for you to actually really survive the attacks that we have. Uh, good lead, though. Uh, that's a really good lead by my opponent. This could be bad news for us. Well done. Because they have double super effective damage here. Ah, here's the question. Do they trick room now with now Ego? <laughs> oh, that it could be a really big problem. I think the best play is actually switch into Cartana here and protect. I actually really like that option. Uh, what does this lose to? I guess Cartana Dynamax Steel Spike into Clef. But the thing is, even if I brought Rotom Heat, Rotom gets demolished by Nao Ego. So you can see how well these Pokemon support each other, right? This team also has Nao Ego Cartana. And the fact that you cover for the fire weaknesses with Nao Ego is just so, so good to make sure Cartana sticks around. I'm making this switch because I also want to cover for the potential Trick Room play turn one. I think Cartana coming in against my opponent's team is pretty good. Uh, I can Dynamax that. Looks like they are going to max their Cartana, so... What was my initial plan? Urshifu plus Clef? That wouldn't have been super good here either, to be honest. Uh, I was reading really hard into a Dragapult lead, and my opponent did not lead that, so well done on their end. In the end, actually, Thunderous Urshifu probably would have been best against what my opponent brought. Because I can just, like, Airstream, guaranteed go, uh, let the Urshifu go faster, and then just Wicked Blow. But I'm down to try this play out, turn one. I think it's likely a Steel Spike into Clefairy. This is gonna do a lot. And they get a defense boost. Oh, they target Thunderous. Interesting. I wonder if they go uh, double up into that slot. And that's a good play because it covers for my protect option. Like, what is Clefairy ever doing in that position, right? And they're just power jamming. Okay. Hmm. How bad is this? 
How bad is this? I guess the better question I should be asking is how can I salvage this? Because I my opponent outled me very hard, uh, and that was a really really good job on their end. I don't know the item on the now ego. Uh, I think they should probably max airstream with Cortana. And I feel forced to actually... Mm. I could conserve my Dynamax for Thunderous in the late game. Um, I think I actually am just going to helping hand Smart Strike the Now Ego. Because I need to KO that. If I KO Cortana... Sorry, if I KO Now Ego, then that's the main Thunderous check out of the way. Yeah, they just go for another Steel Spike. I don't even know if we KO the Now Ego here, to be honest. I, I could have switched out into Thunderous, but this team does not really like switching super well, which is why leading is really important. Mainly because, like, your Pokemon are so frail, so it's like, Max Moons just do so much damage, especially from something like Cortana. Oh, it does get a Beast Boost. That may be a problem, actually. I didn't think about that as much as I should have. Are they Trick Rooming? Oh, no, no, we're just faster, right? Okay, they are Sashed. Hmm, 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 hmm. Power gem. <sighs> this is bad. I think it's gotta be Thunderous here. The thing with Thunderous is you don't KO it, so maybe my play is to just max Airstream here. Power gem's gonna hurt, don't get me wrong, but it's not gonna KO us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They never got any speed boosts off. Hold on. I didn't think about that. That's actually a really big deal, because it means that I can guaranteed go first with Thunderous, right? Yeah, okay. Wait, so so I think our play here then is to Dynamax? Um, Sacred Sword into Cartana, Dynamax, Airstream into Now Ego is pretty safe here. Because it, it KOs, it, it picks up a knockout through Protect, Sacred Sword ignores these defense boosts as well. And I think now what we play towards is a late game Thunderous plus Urshifu sweep where we use our max airstreams to give Urshifu speed boost and then just wicked blow everything. But the problem with that plan is the potential Incineroar. I mean, Incineroar would give us a Defiant boost though, so it's not awful. Good lead by my opponent though, like that was very smart. Um, I, need to, I need to go back to our drawing board and think how I outlead that. Yeah, I, you see that's why I actually thought their Cart Cartana should have been going for speed boost because if you go for speed boosts then... When my Thunderous comes in, you can continue those speed boosts and then basically outspeed me with the Thunderous. With Katana, go for another Max Air. Or actually, you don't even need to go for another Max Air stream. As soon as you get one off, now we go outspeeds Thunderous. Because now I think uh, Thunderous does really well into my opponent's team. Good damage from Sacred Sword. I think that should put it in Wicked Blow KO range. And they're going to go for a Max Knuckle. I'm okay with that. You have all these attack boosts, but at what cost, right? Because now I have Choice Band Thunderous with two more turns and at plus one speed and a uh, Choice Band Urshifu in the back. And the thing about Urshifu in these late game scenarios is that you can't protect in front of it, right? Like, especially once your Dynamax is over, it's not like you can max guard in front of it. So I can just click Wicked Blow into pretty much everything. But it's still scary because I don't know what Pokemon my opponent has in the back. So let's see. I think Ensign coming out here would be GG for them. Like, I would just win because... You can't do anything against Thunderous, and oh, they bring it out. That's really bad news for them, I think. Because you just activated Defiant on Thunderous. Unless you have Protect on Cartana. We haven't seen its moveset yet, but given that the Focus Sash was on the Now Ego, it's most likely a Soul Vest. So, I think it's very safe to just go for... Okay, let, let, let's just consider what's in the back. Feeny, Lando, Insin. And Dragapult. I think we just lock ourselves into Wicked Blow because Thunderous beats the others anyway. So we are at plus one attack, plus one speed. Oh, it does have plus two defense. Wait, I forgot about the defense boost. Do you survive a max knuckle from Thunderous is the question. I wouldn't think so, but if it does, that actually changes the tides of this completely. Uh, either way, I'm going to go Wicked Blow, max knuckle here into the Cartana. Yeah, actually, I didn't think about the fact I might not KO with Max Knuckle. Let's see. We actually need this knockout. I think if we don't get it, we lose. <sighs> ah, we did not get it. Okay, well, that means Urshifu goes down. Thunderous could still 2v1 here, but yeah, I, I called the game too quickly because I forgot about the plus 2 defense. 
Oh, but they Night Slash Thunderous. That is not what they needed to do. You need to KO the Urshifu there. Now we win, I think. Um, but th that's a testament to Cartana's bulk, right? Like, this, this Pokemon's defense is really good. If they have Night Slash, obviously you have... Like, I, I think that means you're definitely AV. Looks decently bulky as well. Uh, I'm going to lock myself in a close combat here into the Incineroar and go for... Have I given Incin a... Sp this doesn't have a speed boost yet, right? Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, given that it doesn't have a speed boost, I think it's safest to just go for an Airstream to guarantee that we outspeed any Scarf users in the back. Cortana switches out. Interesting. Into what? Tapu Fini. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, this also just prevents any shenanigans from the Incineroar. It means you can't pick up a knockout. I think if my opponent just went Sacred Sword, though, into the Urshifu... Uh, actually, Thunderous could still 3v1 in that scenario, because they wouldn't have taken any damage, right? So I could get a knockout. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, even if Urshifu went down there, Thunderous, the next turn can get a guaranteed knockout onto the Kartana slot. And because we have Protect, I actually think Thunderous does enough damage to just 3v1 everything. So maybe it would have been fine anyway. But this is just double KO now. Goodbye. Nice. And Cortana comes back out, but now I've given myself the speed boost as well, so I definitely outspeed. Um, yeah, I think the main thing that helped me in this game was my opponent not going for max airstreams. And then, to be honest, they had to bring an Incineroar in this endgame, like first, before. Because if you bring in Tapu Fini, it's actually probably even worse. Uh, maybe not, because then I would be forced to... I don't get the Defiant boost, I don't knock out Cortana, and I my opponent was probably just... They were covering for the Focus Sash option, I think, or a, a slash me protecting there. They want to guarantee damage off. Which makes a ton of sense. Like, uh, I'm not saying their decision to Night Slash there was, like, objectively incorrect. It just, like, helped us. Because I, I, yeah, I forgot, like, Cortana got to plus two defense. I was like, oh, we definitely KO it, right? But, yeah. Uh, obviously, that wasn't the case. H able to hang on with just a little bit of HP. So, this one I'm not super happy about. We ended up winning, but I felt like I was playing from behind. And I felt like if one play played out a little bit differently. Like, if Urshifu goes down there. Um, like I said, I think Thunders could actually maybe still pull it off there. Because then what I would do... Uh, the tricky thing is, does Thunderous knock out the Incineroar, and what does Incineroar go for? In that position, I would probably just go for a Max Lightning onto Cortana that covers the Tapu Fini switch in. Uh, and then it's a question of, does Incineroar plus Tapu Fini do enough damage in the endgame? Because I'll take Recoil from Wild Charge plus Life Orb, and then Incineroar can obviously go for a Flare Blitz as well. So I think Thunderous had enough damage output, but the question then lies, like, would it have been able to get all this damage off without, like, fainting from all the recoil? And I'm not sure the answer to that is yes, but yeah. I think this was a good demonstration of just how, like, powerful this team in this core can be, and how, if you play it correctly, you can just win immediately, but even from behind, it still has opportunities to win, uh, especially if you conserve your Dynamax and get rid of the main threats. That last game, once again, really good lead by my opponent. Um... I don't know how to outlead that though, because like the, the threat of now you go trick rooming in front of us is really bad and I wanted to show that option respect. I guess we could have Dynamaxed our own Cortana, but if we choose to commit to maxing Cortana, Insin just completely destroys us. So um, maybe it was fine how we played it. I just feel like there's probably a better answer there. I guess actually Rotom Heat's the answer. I, I think the goal maybe is to like one option I could have gone with is to KO the now Eagle and then just bring in Rotom Heat. So like lead Cortana plus something, to put on pressure against the now you go like Cortana plus Urshifu maybe uh the thing is then the opposing Cortana is such a big offensive threat so I don't know but I think Rotom he could have definitely gotten involved in that last matchup too so that's something I gotta give some thought to either way though that's gonna be it for this episode hopefully you guys enjoyed this hyper offense score is really really sick so yeah hope you have some fun playing with it thanks to Benji for the team leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll catch you all next time all right peace